All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Verse Mayor's Comics, where we go through the extensive list of uh, mainstream Marvel comics, talking about the good, the bad, and the batshit crazy. My name is Arden. Next to me on the couch is Sebastian Villanova. How's it going? Uh, it's going pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. This week is uh, kind of, it was 10 comics like usual, but most of the comics were, weren't were over 20 pages. Yeah, there was only, I think, two full-length uh, ones. Think, yeah, the Fantastic Four ones, right. as usual. Yeah. They were all Last, uh, relatively short this week. Yeah, so the past couple weeks, we've, we've had a run of pretty pretty good stuff, I'd say, on the whole. There's a lot of good stuff in there, certainly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not this week. Not not this week. This We've got week, some trash. Uh, we, we, we plunged. Took a deep dive into some of the uh, the lesser-known stuff, and also the there's there's a reason it's lesser-known, because it's not very good. No. no Might as, I, unless you have anything else you want to say in this in this uh, intro, we, we can get right into it here. Let's, let's get into it. We're going to start with Strange Tales 101, titled mm-hmm. The Human Torch. Human Torch. First, first line of solo Human Torch. Right. Series. Uh, basically, this is, it's like, it's basically like a kind of journey into mystery, tales to astonish kind of format. Yeah. Where it's uh, one superhero comic, and then there's a whole bunch of backup anthology tales stuff that we're not going to be talking about. Yeah, nope. So this is 13 pages, uh, stories by Stan Lee and Larry Lieber, and the art is, of course, Jack Kirby. Yeah. So, we start out, the only reason I'm going to talk about this first part right here is because it's kind of completely retconned out pretty uh, a little bit later but basically it starts out and johnny is like hey i'm so glad that nobody knows my secret identity yeah. it makes life so much easier which i didn't i thought people knew his secret identity so when i read this i was like oh okay because everybody knows apparently according to him everybody knows sue's identity as the invisible woman that is correct uh and i think reed is also um, yeah, well known Right, and Ben obviously doesn't have a secret identity, really. Yeah, um, really. So we then cut to the police station, where they're getting they're getting a note from this dude. His name is the Destroyer. The Destroyer. Uh, very generic supervillain. Very, name. very original. And he's basically uh, he's telling them. Actually, wait, hang on. I misspoke. It's not a police station. I think it's a newspaper See, I that thought, he sends the note to. Is it, is it the newspaper? I'm pretty sure because I think it says later. I thought, it was, I thought it was the newspaper and the dude that was in charge of the amusement park itself. Okay, either way, it's not the police station. No, I don't know. Um, they're basically like, yo, stop building this amusement park that you're building yeah. or I'm going to destroy it. Yeah. So they're like, this guy's crazy. This is this is just like a, a prank. Uh, they, they called it like a crank thing. Like a right. Prank, a prank, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, they didn't care. So they're testing out, I think it's the next day or something, they're testing out the oh, roller coaster. Roller coaster. Um, Johnny happened to be on the premises, like, walking right next to He was just kind of walking by. He's like, look at that they, cool They were on a school. Yeah. So yeah. Like, and were, were his, friends, yeah, his friends were there yeah. as well, yeah. So the destroyer uh, tries to kill the, the coaster tester. I don't remember what he does. He, he, like, he, like, cut one of the tracks. Okay. On, like, the highest yeah. point and the thing derailed or whatever. Um, Johnny is trying to protect the secret identity here because his, yeah. his friends are around. So he, like, he can apparently, this, I, and I only kind of, this is kind of a passing note. It doesn't really have any effect on anything. But he just, like, uses his flame powers to control the flame out of a lighter. A lighter that some dude was lighting a cigarette with. I and don't think that's ever. It made, <laughs> he basically just made a huge cloud of smoke. Right. But I don't. Think he can control light or flame? He says he can control any fire within that's within a few feet in front of near him, like if around him. If that's true at this point, it's like never used again. Yeah. So anyway, then the, all the places get another note, and they're like, again, they're like, yeah, it's just a coincidence last time. Yeah. Like, there's nothing going on here. Although, like, at least check it out if there yeah. actually yeah, was the, a... the second time they were just like, oh, it's just a coincidence. <laughs> it has no real correlation. Right. And then they were testing out another ride, and... This one was like a parachute drop thing. Yeah, something, something along those it was, lines. It was, it was a weird ride that I've never heard of before in my life. <laughs> yeah, but um, they were testing out another one, and this one the tower was gonna break. Like the tower was right. crumbling or something. So Johnny is again just coincidentally he's right there, and he used his flame powers to like make like flaming balls in front of like people. <laughs> yeah, and he ran into right. another ride, yeah. flamed on, and then came out. <clears throat> and he uses his flame to like weld the tower back together. Yeah, so it doesn't fall apart. Right. So then that night, Johnny himself receives a note from the destroyer. Well, it was in the newspaper. Oh, right in the newspaper. Right. It was in the newspaper. Uh, and it's basically like, yo, fight me. Bitch, yeah, you're not gonna do it. Basically, um, so Johnny's like, "Okay, fine, I'm gonna do it." And surprise, surprise, at the trap, destroyer takes his flame out. Yep. Um, and he's about to probably kill Johnny. I would imagine. 
uh, when his was it his friends or was it just some other random kids? I think I don't know. I think it was some other random kids. I think it was just some random kids. They They came in, they kind of scare him off, and they're like, "Yo, did you see the torch?" And Johnny's like, "No, I." I didn't see him. I I came in here to try to follow him, but he left. Just to see, to, like, find a secret identity. I guess right. that's what those kids were trying to do, too. So that's how Johnny escaped that thing. So this is where it kind of just went off the rails for me, yeah. is this last section here. So the Torch... kind of weird. Torch has a hunch, and he's like, only the tall amusement park rides have actually been attacked. Yeah. So he's like, so there must be something, like, there must be some reason for that. So he goes to the top of one of them. Of the, I think it was the one that was attacked the first time. It was time. the roller coaster, yeah. yeah. Um, and he sees a communist sub just chilling, chilling in the water. Chilling in the private beach area. And so he's like, <sighs> this is the problem. So he goes over there, tries to stop them. They submerge. He's like, I know a way to get them to not submerge. So he boils the water, <laughs> the ocean water, which... <laughs> Which is technically possible. But it is, but also, water has a, a very s- high specific heat, and, and if, it would take a lot. With so, it, I think it increases that heat. Yeah, and it's just like, the torch, we have been shown many times that the torch is flame does not last very long. No. I don't think he'd have enough time to really I don't know, what channel it, it in the, there. But he basically boils the water, and it force, I guess it forces the submarine to... Rise submerge. to the surface. So then... The, the, the authorities show up, yeah. and they confront the destroyer, and it turns out that it's the newspaper guy who was receiving the notes from the destroyer. Yep. He was a communist informant the entire time, Yeah. and they capture him, and that's it. Yeah, and the reason the reason he was doing this to the ride is because the tall rides could see over to where the sub was parked, mm-hmm. and he didn't right. want that, because he obviously was an informant, so that's why he was trying to get the tall rides to not be a thing. Yeah. I didn't think this one was too bad for a while. I I was I was sitting at two stars until the ending. Yeah. I I You've kind of uh, You've kind of convinced me to go down. Yeah, I just point. like now that I'm talking about yeah. it, it kind of just doesn't It's just the uh, the ending is terrible. There's the ending no is so bad. There's no like way it's... to beat around that. It's really bad. I'm giving it one because of the ending. Like, I wasn't, I, when I first read this, it was a two. Now that I'm talking about it, I'm kind of going down to a one, because it's just... It's not good. It's not good, yeah. now that I think it. Like, it's really not. It's just so out there, and just not... Yeah. It doesn't really go <sighs> yeah. together very well. So, that's that one. That on to the next. Strange Tales number 101. We've got Tales to Astonish number 36, number... titled The Challenge of Comrade, Comrade X. Comrade X. This one is... Ant-Man. It is indeed Ant-Man. So, it starts out, Ant-Man is in a bank, there are some robbers robbing the bank, and they're stuck in a bank vault. Yep. And, and I guess they're running out of oxygen? Yeah, I guess they were running, they got locked in there, and I guess they're running out of oxygen, so Ant-Man You'd think is... there would be an air vent. Yeah. But, <laughs> even just a not. tiny one, but... But, anyway, Ant-Man's in there trying to open the bank vault. He opens it, the police are there waiting for the bank robbers. Right. They get arrested, obviously. At this time, some other communists are learning about Ant-Man, and they're yeah. like, yeah, we're gonna take the secret so we can conquer the world and they're led by this man who is named comrade x no 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 they're led by some other dude and he calls in comrade x i did not notice that (laughs) no yeah they're led by some other dude and he calls in comrade x saying he's their best uh, like espionage agent dude or whatever okay all right fair enough okay so at this time there is another woman yep and she goes into the police station she's like yo i need to talk to him hey man yeah so then we get we cut to hank in his lab and it shows how we kind of know what's going on in the city. Yeah, it's always the ants are always like electric, like like communicating with him via the right. signals so, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it's explained there's a network of ants, and um, basically they're all over the city, and they send electrical signals to Hank. Yeah. So Hank uses his launching cannon thing. Uh, to he launch made like himself. he almost made like a miniature version of like the Fantastic Four base, except in like a small corner of this. Kind building. of. Yeah, it's, it's almost like that, except it doesn't have a like fantastic car or anything. He right. just has this little grenade launcher looking cannon. <laughs> yeah, it's like the the circus cannons that they used to shoot yeah. people out of. Yeah. Um, so he launches himself to the police station using that, and he slips into the woman's purse as she's yep. getting into a taxi. Uh, and then he pops out of her home. He's like, "Yo, tell me what you know. Why, like, why do you need me?" Yeah. Um, and she's she like, goes on to tell him this awful love story between her and Comrade <laughs> X. And how she loved him, but then he cheated on her with some other woman, and that Comrade X is there in America to get Ant Man. So Ant Man's like, okay, and so well, then she tells him that he's in like this, is it like a pier? Or yeah, something? it's like a yacht. He's on a yacht. Yeah, something like that. 
So Hank goes out to the yacht, and he is then captured by means of a glass box being placed over him. Yes, with holes tiny enough for him to breathe, but right. not for an ant to slip through. Right. I don't know if that really works. But the other thing is, he has the... He still has the strength of a man. That is true. And he can't break out of this little glass box. Yeah, I never really thought about that. Yeah, that doesn't really well, make a whole lot of sense. If you think about it, if, if a dude were to punch through a glass box, all his bones in his hands would break. Like, people breaking through glass with their elbows in the movies, though, their, their, their elbows would technically break. I mean, sure. I don't know. Just, like, so, I mean, just I like guess kick maybe, it, man. Maybe just he like knew that? It. I don't know. Uh, either way. Yeah, either way. Or he, maybe it was part of his plan. I don't know. Uh, he uses his electronic signals to call... Because they can pass through the air holes in the box, apparently. I don't think so. That's what it says in really? the comic. Yeah. Is that his impulses can get through the... Oh, the impulses, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the ants themselves. No, 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 the impulses, yeah. No, yeah, the ants, the impulses, it's a glass box. It's not like it's well, lead. Well, right, so I know, but like he, it. well, he says, it, it's not even that the impulses can get through the glass. He describes it as the impulses can get through the air holes. Weird, you wouldn't yeah. even need to get through. It's not like it blocks it or anything. I know, yeah, yeah, sure, but okay. Stanley doesn't know science. Yeah. Uh, I guess, actually, this wasn't written by Stanley. This was Larry Lieber. <laughs> uh, anyway, he, so he uses those electronic signals, calls to the ants, who then, like, jump on some wood and, like, push they, themselves. So, yeah, they carry the wood, they drop it in the water, and then they use the wood to float towards the boat, and then they climb up on the anchor. Right. Which technically would make sense. Yeah, it would take a hell of a long time, though. Yeah, it would. It definitely would. <laughs> um, so, the ants come, they crawl on the um, communists. They call, crawl on one, the dude that's guarding the glass box. Right. They, like, make him drop his gun, and the gun lands on the glass box, shattering it. Right. He proceeds to lock all the commies into one room, I'm right. pretty sure, and then he goes after Comrade X. Right. So, on his way there, he goes through the radio room, yeah. and he... Dispatches the operator. He like goes up and drops a lamp on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, he calls the authorities. Yeah. So he goes to see Comrade X. So the ants like he he somehow knocks Comrade X to the ground. Yeah, I don't really remember. And the ants like pull off a mask. A, a mask off of Comrade X, and Comrade X the entire time was that woman that asked to see Ant Man. Right, and her name is actually Madame X, and not. Comrade X is how it is described in here. I think he just was making like a pun, like saying, you're not Comrade X, you're Madame X. I don't remember, whatever. and I'm not going to check it. So yeah, it was the one in the police station, and he knew because when he was in her purse in the taxi, he yeah. saw her mask. He saw the mask. And so the authorities show up, and everything is okay. I hate this one. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> I really don't like it. Dude, now that I'm talking about these out loud, they're a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, they're not good. Like This is really bad. Like, I really crap. don't like this one. I gave this three stars. I don't know how. I, I don't know how. Like, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> rating this this is really bad. I'm giving you one star. I hate this one. Oh, man. I'm assuming you are dropping it. I am dropping this. What are you dropping this to? Down, down, down. I'm going to give it... I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for two stars. Okay. Specifically because, like, it all makes sense. I just, I thought it was boring. I wasn't really too into it. <clears throat> oh, man. Next up, Journey, Journey of the Mystery 86. This is Thor. Thor. The title is On the Trail of the Tomorrow of the Man. The Tomorrow Man. So, true to the title of The Tomorrow Man, it's, uh, it opens 300 years in the future. So everybody there, it's like a peaceful world. It's still Earth, right? I believe it's I think still it's, Earth. It is still Earth, yes. Um, but it's it's a world where war was abolished. There's right. no such thing as weapons anymore. Everybody right. just lives in peace. Everybody except Zarko, the Zarko, Tomorrow Man. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, well, I want to rule all these people, pretty much. Um, yeah, they're all. He was like, they're all weak. They right. don't understand the world. So I want to rule over them. But there's no weapons right. in this time. So he's like. I'll go back in time to when there were nuclear weapons, and I'll just unleash them upon my time and enslave everybody. Which doesn't make sense to me, because if he can design and make a time machine, he can design and make a weapon. You would think so, yeah. Very But apparently easily. not. I, Which, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I guess in Marvel continuity, time machines do exist at this point, because they were, I mean, Doom had his last week. Oh, that's true. So maybe he didn't design it, maybe there's just one lying around. Either way... I'm trying to give this one the benefit of the doubt, because it's not as bad as some of the other ones. No, it's um, not. So anyway, we cut back to the present. Cut back to the present. Thor is helping the military, military test... test mil he's helping them test, like, a new missile. 
Yeah, What's basically these atomic weapons. I yeah. think it's called the Cobalt Bomb? Cobalt. Yeah, that sounds... Yeah. So Zarko comes in, steals it, and just goes back to his own time. Doesn't engage, he just goes back to his own time. Yeah, he just steals it, throw, tries to stop him by throwing the hammer, but yeah. his time machine phases out of time too fast, and right. the hammer just passes through. Somehow the police figure out that Zarko is a time traveler. Like they're like he just, just fades away. Yeah, he's like they just he just they were like he just fades away. Like, time traveler. So Zarko whatever. is back in his own time, and Thor is like I'm gonna track him down. He summons. <laughs> oh, what? He, he summons a thunderstorm. Yeah, a thunderstorm, and Odin just kind of pops up. He specifically tries to summon Odin to talk to Odin, right? To ask permission if he could time travel, right? To figure out where. A piece of the to- uh, the time machine. So he has a fragment of the metal. Of the metal, and they have never seen it before. I think that's how they figured out he was a time traveler. Okay. They, they'd never seen that metal yeah. before. And they were like, he just disappeared, so he must yeah. be going back to his own time. Yeah. So he, uh, Thor asked Odin for permission to go track down the Tomorrow Man. Right. So Thor gets to the future. Yep. Uh, and he then realizes that Zarko, in the time that it has taken him to get there, has uh, seized power, and he's using a cobalt bomb, which is what he stole. He's using the cobalt bomb to hold everybody hostage, right. basically, because nobody has weapons right. anymore. And so everybody's like, we can't stop him. He has the only weapon. Right. So Thor goes to confront Zarko, and he takes out the guards, and this like mysterious robed guy is just kind of yeah. helping him out. He stops... Zarko tells, like, these officer dudes, they're like, go stop him. They're like, we can't do anything else. He has the only weapon. So they right. go to try to get Thor. This other dude rips off a tree from the ground and <laughs> smashes their car. <laughs> and then they both run away. The guards are out. Yeah. And so uh, Thor gets to Zarko, who sends Thor down into a trap door. Yeah. Into a room of magnetic mirrors, which are just tossing Thor about. Again, humans are not magnetic enough for that to happen. It's like the third time this has happened. Yeah, it's... Get like... your fucking magnets right, Stanley. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Strong magnets in the future. So, but then it turns out that the Thor in the mirror room was actually a decoy. I guess it was probably the robed guy. It was the robed guy. Yeah. And Thor... Was just standing there watching. Thor, be, like, put on the robe and was like, haha. Right. That's not Thor, I'm Thor. So, first of all, who is this robe to do? Like, who is this other it guy? Never it never explains, explains it. it. You see a picture of him. Right. But it's it never just some explain, random it's guy. Just some random dude. And he's standing there, he's like, phew, thanks Thor for, like, for, like, stopping that, because now, like, I was, I was really getting banged around. Thor just, like, sat there and watched him for, like, a few minutes just get smashed around by the mirrors. Like, I don't understand what's happening here. Oh, my god! Um, so then Zarko tries to send Thor into another dimension, but Thor uses his hurricane breath. Is that what it was? I, I think it is. I got so lost <laughs> in those couple panels. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, I don't even know. Everything being super hazy, and I was like, somehow Thor all of a sudden is in a room full of robots. <laughs> yeah. So Thor uses his hurricane breath to escape, and right, then the giant robots are there, and they somehow manage to take his hammer? They just, like, pluck it out of his hands. They don't even, like... Are the robots worthy? What the hell is this? I guess so. What's happening? At this point, it was was the same as, like, whoever is worthy of holding Thor has uh, the only or has the power of Thor. But there's no way the robots are worthy. Well, then again, if you think about it, if you put it in an elevator, elevator will go Elevator's not worthy. Elevator's not worthy. So Um, if it's a robot... I don't think it matters. All right. Whatever you say. Uh, Zarko flies off in his ship, but then Thor makes a storm, and then he flies super fast and makes a wind tunnel, which sucks the bomb away from the ship. Because basically at this point, Zarko's like, okay, I'm sick of this. If I can't rule the world, I'm just going to destroy it. Yeah. So he puts the cobalt bomb on the ship and is about to go detonate it. But then Thor gets the The, the bomb away. Yep. And Zarko's just, ship crashes. Yeah, and then... He somehow survives He somehow it. survives the crash. He loses all his memory. There's no way he survived that crash. I don't, I'm yeah. sorry. And then Thor returns the bomb back to the present. Yeah. That's it. This is not the last appearance of Zarko the Tomorrow Man, if I remember correctly. I think he does show up again. I don't remember exactly, but I didn't hate this. I didn't I didn't dislike it, no. I didn't now that get... I'm talking about it, it is, like, there's a lot wrong with it. There is a lot wrong with it, <laughs> but... but... I mean, it was fun enough. It was, compared, it was an enjoyable yeah, read, honestly. It was, compared to the other ones that we've been talking first, about so far. The first far, two that right, we had to This is miles about. ahead of that. It's a oh, lot more yeah. fun. So I gave it I gave it three stars. I gave it a three stars, too, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it was... 
It was good. All right, on to the next one. Strange Tales 102, another Human Torch one. Another Human Torch. Called Prisoner of the Wizard. Riz is introducing the longtime Fantastic Four foe, the Wizard. The Wizard, which I quite enjoyed him. He's not the worst. I quite enjoyed it. It could be worse. So, it starts out, there's some people watching a Human Torch movie, it seems like. Yep, Why? Because he's like the... It's literally just a recap of the first... The Stranger Tale number 101. Yep, it absolutely is. Stranger um, Tale number 101. The wizard is there. The wizard is it. there. He's super smart. He's apparently also the world champion of chess and a very good escape artist. Yeah. We never see him use those skills, not, but they well, apparently they, exist. I mean, they go... They do show you him using it, like, but not against right. the Human Torch I mean, himself. I guess chess would not be very handy against no. the Human Torch. Um, the escape artist thing is all a fluke. Yeah, it's, in his, yeah. In his backstory, it showed that it was, he like basically gadgets. tried to do the classic Houdini thing, where right? He chains around him, locked in a safe, dropped in water, right? And basically, how he escaped the chains is that he had he had like a rotorized like a little saw, saw yeah. in his ring, and it was indestructible, and it cut him out of the chains, and then he developed this gas that would expand, that could expand when it came in contact with air. And it broke the safe open, and that's how he escaped. Right. So, so, he's basically like, yeah, I need to test my smarts, so I'll turn to a life of crime and try to, and try to kill the Human Torch. Yeah. So, his plan is basically kind of what Loki's plan was last week, and he's, he's like, I'm going to make a distraction, make him think I'm in danger, yep. and then uh, he'll come out, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take him out. So, his, his, the way to do that is he plans... T- to drill, is it just to the center of the earth? Just kind of deep, deep into the earth. Just to the other side, because I don't know. I didn't... Uh, it seems like it's main. It's it's wherever it is. It's just inside the earth. Because his yeah. plan is to cause a cave in, so yeah. that the human torch will come in. Yeah, and save him. Right. So his plan succeeds. The human torch comes. He right. rescues the wizard. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I guess he took him back to his the wizard's house. house. Yeah, he's like, I want to show you my appreciation. Come back to my super modern house. Yeah, uh, and he's like. Torch, stand in front of this camera that will take a 3D picture of you. And Torch is like, oh, that sounds cool. And then it just douses his flame. Yeah. So then the wizard locks up the torch and uses the device to impersonate him. And he basically does what yeah. the Skrulls did a couple weeks ago. And just they frees criminals, robs banks, does all these yeah, kind of crimes. Cr- criminal acts, yeah. basically, to turn the world against the torch. Right. Um, so eventually the torch escapes. Right. I don't really remember how. He's then in his bestest room, which yeah. is the fireproof material in the Marvel Universe. I don't know if it's actually fireproof in real life. I don't I, no I don't. I think that might have been disproved at some point, but also don't quote me on that because I might be wrong. And he uses, like, his Nova heat, and that somehow just burns right through uh, it. Okay, yeah. I guess it was too hot. It was, like, too hot for the asbestos. Right. Um, and then... He somehow, just luckily, using his supervision, I guess, sees Wizard just hanging out at, like, a taxi window. Yeah. That is incredibly convenient. Incredibly convenient. He, the wizard is like, come to my place tomorrow, we'll settle this once and for all, I guess? As, yeah, pretty much. That's how it worked. So Torch so, makes a call. Yeah. Makes a phone call and then he goes to the house. Uh, and there, the wizard shows photos of himself changing into the human Torch. And he's like, yo, you can have them if you kill me or reveal your identity. Yeah. So Torch tricks the wizard into thinking that he levitates the pictures over to himself. Yeah. He calls the police, shows the pictures, clears himself. It's then revealed that the call Johnny made was to Sue Storm, and she was actually just invisible, and she brought the pictures to Johnny. The, she, yeah, the entire time. It was, she, he tricked the wizard, basically. That was how he defeated him. Right. Never and, uh, it. yeah, that's, that's, that's it for that yeah. one. This is not... I wouldn't call this good, um, but it's not... The same level as the last one. Uh-oh. Um, like, for me, the wizard brought this comic up. Like, I enjoyed him. Yeah, the wizard is an alright villain. I gave it two stars. Two stars. Did you as well? That was yours as well? Okay, cool. Yeah. That is the end of that one. Next up. Ugh. Incredible Hulk 4A. Uh, this is the first part of the Incredible Hulk story, issue number four. Yeah. Uh, it's called The Monster and the, Mas- the, machine. the Machine. Yeah, this one was more about getting the Hulk back to Bruce Banner. Right. So we start out, and Rick is at this machine, about to bombard the Hulk with some jam rays. Yep. So then we cut to a flashback to Betty, and she's thinking about how she met Bruce, and once again... For the fourth time in a row, it shows the Hulk's origin. Yup. <laughs> um, it has now shown the Hulk's origin in every issue up to this point. Oh, man. 
tired. I, I literally, sk- as soon as I noticed it was like, <laughs> I skipped the entire, entire See, part. See, this isn't important in itself, but it is a little bit... There's a point where she seems like she's about to put the pieces together that Bruce is the whole. Yeah. And, uh, and then she just doesn't. No. For some reason, she's like, what is the connection between Rick and Bruce? <laughs> yeah. Right. Hulk and Rick. And yeah. Like, he's like, what do you mean? Bruce is the fucking Hulk. <laughs> Figure it out. Christ. It's not that hard. <laughs> um, so, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, so Betty goes to her father, General Thunderbolt Ross, uh, to yep. try to find Rick. Because, He's as like Sebastian the, said, there's a connection between right. all three of them. Right. She thinks that he is the key uh, yeah. to to figuring all of this out. Uh, she finds Ross, who's testing out a new weapon to take down the Hulk. It's a like a fr- uh, an iceberg launcher. Yes. I guess? This is a terrible weapon because they're in the desert. It would hit the Hulk, it would turn him into an ice cube, and then it would melt super quick, and then it'd just be back to square one. Yeah, it's dumb. So at first, Ross is like. Nah, man, I don't care. I don't care about Bruce. Whatever. Uh, but then he's uh, Betty's like, yo, but this will also like help us find the Hulk. Hulk. And he's like, get, get find Rick immediately. We need to find the Hulk. So uh, we cut uh, to Rick's house, and yes. the army is starting to surround it. Yep, and he tells the Hulk to jump out of there and leave. Right. And one of the soldiers notices the Hulk, but doesn't want to sound crazy, so he doesn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, he's like, they'll think I'm insane. So Rick gets that brought in, sense. and um, they're basically like, yo, if you don't tell us what you know, we'll arrest you. So we cut to the Hulk, who is too far away now to be under risk control. Yep. He happens to just see a bus of kids about to be hit by a train. He saves it for whatever reason, and then just keeps going. Yep. He causes some chaos at this movie studio, and then he just jumps away. Again. So then he receives a thought from Rick, and Rick is like, help, help, help. So Hulk comes flying in, Superman pose and all. <laughs> yeah, he does look like he's flying in this. And uh, grabs Rick out of the car and just jumps away again. Mm-hmm. And they go to Bruce's hidden underground lab, where we catch back up to where we were at the beginning in the present. Yep. Rick hits Bruce with the rays, and it turns him back to Bruce, but yeah. he leaves them on for a bit too long. And it leaves Bruce so weak that he needs a wheelchair. So Bruce is like, yo, I need to be strong. I'm going to try to merge my brain with the Hulk's body. Yep. And it does work, and giving us the first instance of yep. Professor Hulk. Professor Hulk, yep. This is not like the true version of Professor Hulk, but it's, no, it's the he, first he version. He kind of just dresses like the Hulk. Yeah. Um, but just talks like Bruce, basically. So, the caveat there, though, is that Bruce uh, is a much more vicious. He sounds much more vicious. Yeah, he um, has the, yeah. So, Hulk kind of works the controls, so he's able to operate them, and he can choose to change back to Banner whenever he wants. So, he goes out, he saves a family from a burning house, but they freak out. They're like, it's they, a monster! They, they, they freak out, and they start shooting at him. The police show up, and then they start shooting. The family does not start shooting. I thought the family was shooting at them. I don't think they are? I don't know. Anyway, so they jump out. They jump out and they go back to the lab where Hulk changes back to Bruce, and that's the end of four A. That's the end of four A. I know you didn't like this. I didn't hate this one though. I thought it was a lot Dude. better than the previous ones. These are so. This is Hulk is boring. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought this was okay. I gave it a three stars. Two. All right. Dude, I like Hulk. Well, this one was so boring. There was like there was no villain. It was just. See, but I think that made Professor it a little Hulk. bit better, though. Yeah, the first instance of Professor Hulk, but then again, I hate Professor Hulk. I hate the <laughs> idea. Like, it's so dumb to me. I don't know. I don't know. I I think I prefer no villain to a really shitty villain. I mean, I guess that's fair. <laughs> but, no. it's I hate the Hulk comics. They're so boring for me. It's just, ew. All right. Fair enough. Well, fair this enough. is the end of part one. Uh, we are halfway through this batch, so this is the end of part one. I'm actually going to do an outro this time, so it's not just an abrupt end. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, if you are listening to this and it's on the day this comes out, there should be part two coming out on Friday. So if you would like, you can go listen to that as soon as it's Friday. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. See ya.